Good morning, boys and girls. Yesterday we read a story called A Chair for My Mother by Vera Williams. We worked on activities about saving money and putting money into a jar. We all need to make sure that we learn how to save our money so we can buy things that we really want. For instance, what is something that you buy or you have saved your money in order to buy? Kaylee. A bike. A bike. That's a good one. Did it take you very long to save it all up? It took a long time. Took Lots of long. allowance. Yeah. You make sure you save it up, too, so you don't spend any of it. Yep. What about you? Um, a new dress. A new dress? Ooh. Well, that's pretty. Have you worn it yet? Um, no. No? Not yet? No. Well, I'm sure you will, since you've saved all your money and worked really hard for it. So in a chair for, a mother, for my mother, we learned about a little girl who tries to earn money by working with her mom at her restaurant. And then we also learned that the grandmother would save her money as well so they could all pitch in to buy something that they all thought they needed for their new house. The new item was a chair. It wasn't just any old chair, was it? It was a nice, soft, comfy chair that they could all sit in and hang out together. In the story, we read about the little girl who worked very hard for her money along with her mom. They saved all their money that they earned into a jar. This jar was completely dedicated to buying that chair for their entire family. Can anybody tell me or remember from the story why they were saving their money? What had happened to their house? It caught on fire. It caught on fire. And then everything in the house was ruined. They said they didn't have any piece of the house that could have been saved. The little girl and her family even worked hard to raise money and even the neighborhood came together to raise money for them as well. Remember they said the neighborhood came together to help them earn a lot of money? They had, a, they par they had a party. They had a party, yes. Good job, Kaylee. They had a party that came together and they even offered items that they figured would be nice for their new house since everything in their house was spoiled. Spoiled was actually one of our words from yesterday and we are going to go over a few of those words. So I'm going to go ahead and pass them out. We're going to work on remembering the key vocabulary words of the story and what those key vocabulary words mean. So Kaylee, what is the first word on the top of this list? Tips. Tips. Good job. And can you tell me what tips means? What is the definition? A small sum of money given to someone for performing a service. Good job. Can you use it in a sentence for me? Uh, the waitress had many tips from working last night. Good job. And they used tips in the story because she earned money from her mother who worked at the cafeteria and would give tips. Good job. All right, what's the next word? Bargain. Bargain. Can you read it for me? What is the definition? To purchase something for a reduced price. Good job. And in the story, they got a bargain because they got the chair for a lot less price than they expected it. Kaylee, can you read the next word? Charcoal. Good job. Read the definition, please. A dark grayish brown to black or dark purplish gray color. Good job. And what was the charcoal from? The charcoal was from? The, uh, from like the fire. Mm-hmm. The house burned down. All right, go ahead. The next word? Ashes. Mm-hmm. Can you read the definition for me? A grayish white to black powdery substance left behind when something is burned. Mm -hmm. And the house was burned down, and all that was left was the ashes, right? Mm -hmm. All that was left. All right, go ahead and read. The, can you read me the definition for tulips, please, Kaylee? A cup shaped or bell shaped flower in a variety of colors. Mm -hmm. And tulips was one of the main aspects of the story because they wanted the brand new chair. And the new chair they wanted had to have tulips designed on it because tulips was their favorite thing that they all three could agree on. All right, and then can you read me the very last word, Alyssa? Spoiled. All right, and what is the definition for that word? To damage or severely harm. Good job. Can you remember what was spoiled in the story? The house was all gone, so mm -hmm. everything was destroyed. And it was spoiled. Yep, everything was burned, and so there was nothing left for them to have. Good job, boys and girls. So our next task is I want you all to come together to do an open mime portrait, which is a Tompkins strategy, lesson number 26. 
what you do is we have a picture of a character. Who was the main character in the story? It was the little girl. girl. Little girl. Good job. So what I want you to do is if you could flip the front page and turn it to the back. Good job. Flip that for you, hon. And I want you to work as a group to come together to think of different main events that happened in the story that would have maybe shaped the girl to be who she is when she was saving money. So you go ahead and work on that. Work together. Don't forget you can use your vocabulary words that we did because the vocabulary words will help you remember different events that happened in the story. collected the tips. What made the girl who she is? Was she happy? Was she sad? Did the family stay strong when they lost everything in the fire? They all came together and worked together, didn't they? Mm hmm Good job. I know they worked really hard together. They wanted to make sure that they could afford everything. The, cow, the chair wasn't very expensive, but it also wasn't cheap either, was it? No. They had to have lots of heart. A lot of heart, mm-hmm, to work together and to stay strong. It's not easy when you lose everything, is it? Has anybody ever lost everything that they've owned? No. Couldn't imagine. That'd be really hard, wouldn't it? Yeah. They got a bargain, mm-hmm. Because they were saving their money, they couldn't buy the most expensive thing. They had just started saving, and they needed a chair as soon as possible. They needed somewhere that they could relax and something they could call their own. Good job. They liked the tulips. Mm-hmm, the tulips. Good job. All right, once you're done finishing that last sentence, go ahead and flip it to the front page. Now go ahead and you can start creating your own image of the character. So go ahead and start on the second one to the right, right here, and start drawing in those characteristics you just talked about. So if there was a fire, you might want to draw a house. Maybe that would have been caught on fire and everything had been destroyed. You could draw a heart because the little girl had so much heart and so did the family. Even though they lost everything, they stayed strong together. When you use an open mind portrait, you want to make sure that you use images or different events that happened within a story that could maybe shape the character to be who she is. The character was strong throughout the story because she lost everything and she knew she had to be strong in order to get her family by. Just like her mother, even though they lost everything, her mom worked really hard to earn money for a chair and to also make sure that the family was stable enough to keep on living. Good job. That's a good picture of a house, Kaylee. Keep drawing. Would you say the little girl was brave? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not once did you hear her complain about losing everything or crying. She just knew she had to be there to be strong for her mother. Once you are done with that side, you'll be able to go to the other image and you will create your own visual perspective of what you think the character looks like through those characteristics. For instance, this is what mine looked like. We had pictures of the kid, the daughter sitting in the chair, and we had the house that had burned down and the jar coins because they had saved all their money and we needed it for the jar. And last but not least, we had the picture of the heart and the tulips that were on the couch or on the chair and then we had an image of the mother and the grandma because those two people were the closest people to the little girl that she could count on. If it wasn't for her mother and her grandmother, I don't know if they would have got by as much. So boys and girls, once your open mind portrait is done, you can go back to it and use it for whenever you may need it for something. 
Um, the Open Mind Portrait will help you remember different vocabulary words of the story and what they may, may mean. If you have troubles remembering those different images that go for that certain vocabulary word, feel free to go ahead and write the vocabulary word next to the drawing so it helps you remember. And then, And then once we're done, um, what I'd use for my technologies for the students with a disability, if they ever struggled to draw, I used Powtoon, which is a really great app. It allows you to create characters and also lets you to do your own like skits and drawings. So they'd be able to do their own images of the people's heads and then the different events that happen throughout the story. And so they could create it and put it into their own perspective. And then I also use Poplet, and Poplet is an app that the students can use to do their um, graphic organizers. And the graphic organizers will come together, and those students can use the graphic organizers and put them into their own open mind portraits. So I thought that was really cool. And then once we are done with all the open mind portraits for the class, we would scan them in, and then we would use those documents to create a final PowerPoint and then I would have the students present to the class their open mind portrait and like what it means to them and what they thought about the little girl and whether or not they thought she was brave or the different events that occurred since everybody may have different events or may think different events shape the girl to be who she is.